independent of the length of the system, but it's non-zero. Uh, the, the main part of my talk is going to be about uh, what happens when electrons scatter off one another. There, I'm going to claim there is a way to make the resistance not proportional to the length, not independent of the length, but a, a proportional, inversely proportional to the length. So the longer the system is, the smaller the resistance is. I should also say, uh, I should have said it earlier on, uh, as I said before uh, we started the talk, I don't see you. Uh, so if there are questions and so on, just, uh, you know, speak up. Uh, so so uh, uh, let me uh, start. Uh, Luther's theory tells us, or Ohm's theory, tells us that when a current is flowing here from left to right, uh, there is no magnetic field, so nothing complicated. When a current flows from left to right, uh, there's a voltage, and the voltage is proportional to the current when both of them are small, and the proportionality constant is called the resistance. In two dimensions, the resistance is proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the width of the sample. I'm going to talk about uh, two-dimensional systems uh, throughout, uh, or at least quasi-two-dimensional systems. So this is the theory. Now, uh, how, how does he get this, uh, uh, to this conclusion? Uh, do the theory is based on a, 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 a relation between the momentum loss to impurities and the momentum gain by a, a, an electric uh, field. Uh, the the, the uh, main quantity that uh, do the introduced into the picture is the mean free uh, time or the uh, uh, scattering rate to impurities, one over tau. And what he finds is that the resistance is proportional to the length, as we said, and inversely proportional to uh, tau, to the, to the mean free time between uh, collisions. Now, uh, uh, is this a, a classical uh, uh, result or a quantum mechanical result? Well, um, that that uh, uh, somewhat of a subtle question because you can take the do the expression for resistivity. Let me see if I can uh, make the uh, if I can make a, a, a point here. Somehow I don't see how. So so let let's give this up. Uh, so so uh, uh, I can take the the, the do the expression the mass divided by the density, electric charge squared, mean free time, and rewrite it in terms of h over e squared, Planck's constant divided by electric charge squared, times one over KFL, where KF is the Fermi momentum and L is the mean free path. Now this has age in it, so it looks quantum mechanical. Now in fact, we know age may come out of two different sources. One from the quantum mechanical aspect of the electron as a wave, but the other one from the fermionic nature of the of the electron, from the fact that the distance between electrons, one over k Fermi, is related to the momentum of the electron, p Fermi, through an h bar. Uh, and in this case, uh, the the, the uh, appearance of age in the formula is a, a consequence of the fermionic statistics. Now. Can we make the? Can we take uh, the mean free path to infinity? Namely, take out all impurities and uh, uh, have the resistance uh, become it may become zero. Uh, the answer to that is no, and it was given by Landauer. And Landauer had a different formulation of the uh, resistance, which I'd like to review now. But before uh, I do that, let me just make sure you guys all hear me because I don't see you. We hear you well, Ladi. Ah, okay, good. Uh, so, so you know, I don't know if if uh, if some uh, you know internet problem comes up, uh, send me an email and I'll see it on my cell phone. Sure, sure, sure. Ah, okay. So, so uh, what did Landauer say? Landauer uh, thought about the problem uh, in in a quantum mechanical way, thinking about the conductor as a system connecting between two observers, one uh, with a, a a, a, a higher chemical potential, mu L, than uh, the lower chemical potential on the right. 
So electrons that move from the left to the right come with a higher chemical potential that, than electrons that come from the right to the left. Now, uh, uh, Landauer quantized or looked, looked at the quantum mechanical channels that uh, go from left to right. And uh, for each one of them, he said, well, I'm going to think about each one of them as a parabolic dispersion where I have more electrons moving to the right than I have electrons moving to the left. And because of that, I have a current. But then in order to have that current, I need to have a chemical potential difference between the two sides. And then you carry out this calculation of the relation between the current and the chemical potential difference. And you find this very beautiful cancellation of the velocity which comes into the integral because we're looking at current and the density of states which is proportional to one of the over the velocity so that what you find is that the current per channel is e over h times the chemical potential difference this gives the resistance as h over e squared divide, uh, multiplied by one over the number of channels and the number of channels is kf times w the fermi momentum times the uh, width so we get a resistance. It's non-zero, but it's independent of the system's size. Now, uh, by this theory, and that's the point we're going to relook at, by this theory, uh, the voltage drops or the, con uh, the contacts. Now, uh, that's a quantum mechanical, very, uh, very deep analysis. But in fact, you can almost say that you could have uh, uh, expected this just based on common sense. Because look at the resistance. The resistance, as we said before, is h over e squared, uh, 1 over kfl, times the, uh, the resistance, not the resistivity, times the length divided by the width. I can also write it, as, a, as you can see on the right part of the, of the uh, expression, as h over e squared, 1 over kfw, times the length divided by the mean free path. Now, you know, just think about it. If the mean free path is a... Uh, a, a kilometer or a light year and the system is one centimeter then the difference between a kilometer and a, a kilometer and a light year is not going to matter the system is not going to have any impurity in it so when when little l is much larger than a capital l basically uh, this ratio between them can be replaced by one and you get the uh, landauer resistance anyway we have the Drude expression we have the landauer expression each one should have its own a regime of validity, are they correct? Uh, let's look at the experiment. So, you, you know, my, my uh, uh, colleagues from, from uh, Shachal Ilani's group have this amazing device that I'm not going to describe in details. Uh, they have this amazing device that can measure the voltage at any point they want. Doesn't matter how they do that. They can measure the voltage. You, you, you uh, uh, tell them you want a uh, a voltage map uh, 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 anywhere in your uh, sample and then measure the voltage at any point without attaching any contact. Uh, so what you see here is they uh, look at a piece of graphene uh, and uh, measure the voltage as a function of position. When the current flows from left to right, the uh, system is in a, a diffusive state. It, it's, a, it's a dirty uh, piece of graphene and uh, the main reason it's in a diffusive state is not so much that it's dirty, but that the density is very uh, uh, small and therefore there's no screening of impurity. And you see the voltage drops linearly and in fact it follows through the theory uh, to the dot. Now, uh, then you, you turn on the density, you turn the density higher, uh, which means the system effectively gets much cleaner because the impurities are screened. And look what happened. There is no voltage drop at the center of the device at all. All the voltage drops are at the two contacts, half at each, you know, distributed equally between the two contacts. And uh, uh, again, this follows the, the uh, Landauer prediction very well. Uh, so, so those are the two limits that we know. Uh, Adi, now, can I interrupt? Adi, can I interrupt yeah, you sure. here? Sure. Yeah, so this uh, this thing being completely symmetric, is it uh, is it fine tuned because of the experiment? Does the theory really say it has to be symmetric? I mean, uh, uh, it has right. to be that uh, much. But what about the symmetry? So 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 the symmetry is not essential, and in fact, we'll see uh, 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 the main case. I'm going to talk about the Corbino 
case is, is very, un, very much non-symmetric. Uh, here the sample is symmetric uh, okay. and, and there is very, very little contact resistance. It's only the land, uh, Landauer Schauvin resistance that fall, falls there, so it comes out symmetric. But there is no law of nature that it must be symmetric. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you. So, so now what I'd like to talk about is can we make the resistance uh, smaller than the Landauer Schauvin uh, limit? Uh, and the, the route I'm going to talk about is electron hydrodynamics, which is another way of saying scattering between electrons. So we're going to look at uh, the effect of scattering between electrons and ask, can we use this scattering? It's scattering, okay? Uh, can we use this scattering to make the resistance small? Uh, now, should we worry at all about uh, uh, scattering between electrons? Now, I'm not talking about scattering between electrons and impurities, just between electrons themselves. Uh, should we uh, at all worry about, th about that? Well, the answer is yes and no. Uh, yes, because electrons interact, after all, by Coulomb interaction, it's a pretty strong interaction. So, so if they interact, they'll probably scatter off one another. Uh, that's the positive, uh, the argument for yes. The argument for no is a very, very subtle argument made by Landau. And that is because the electrons are fermions. Now, in a scattering event between two electrons, the, both of them come, obviously, from occupied states, uh, the state they come from, and must find empty states to be scattered to and must conserve momentum and must conserve energy. Now, uh, uh, electrons which are deep in the Fermi C, uh, very deep compared to the temperature or compared to the energy with which the, the electron comes from the contact, those electrons have no chance of finding a vacant state uh, to be scattered to and yet conserve energy. So, so all these electrons which I just made white are ineffective when it comes to scattering of uh, uh, other electrons at the Fermi C. And uh, that observation led uh, Landau and followers to calculate the electron-electron scattering rate and see that it's proportional to the square of the temperature divided by the Fermi energy. And that is because most of the electrons are ineffective in scattering. Now, uh, that's a very small number because remember, the uh, uh, Fermi energy in two dimensions is proportional to the density. So the scattering rate, not only that it's not proportional to the density, as common sense would tell you, you know, if you ever uh, went around in a busy uh, uh, train station, you know that your scattering rate of your uh, uh, fellow passengers is uh, shorter, uh, uh, or scattering rate is higher, the bigger the density is. If you come at the, the rush hour, the, the scattering rate is highest. Here, what Landau found is that for fermions, the scattering rate gets smaller the higher the density is. So, and so, if we, so in many, many cases, we really don't need to worry about electron electron scattering because the scattering rate is much smaller than the scattering rate of impurities. The, uh, the exception to that is when we have uh, very clean samples, high temperatures, or low densities. And graphene will give us all these requirements together. And this is, it will make us or, or force upon us or encourage us to think about electron electron scattering. Now, suppose that we think about it. How will it affect the uh, equation, the, the momentum balance uh, that uh, Drude presented to us? Well, the momentum balance of Drude, remember, you gain from the electric field, you lose to impurities. And now, what, what happens out of the uh, your, your interaction with other electrons. So what happens is this, you know, your interaction with other electrons, when you scatter, if you're an electron and you scatter off another electron, uh, the other electron tries to uh, convince you, quote unquote, to move in its own velocity. So if the other electron is faster, you will come out of this collision running faster. If the other uh, electron is uh, slower, you will come out of this uh, collision uh, going slower. And if the electrons to your right are faster than you and the electrons to your left are, are, are slower than you, you'll come out basically unaffected. That uh, observation that I just said qualitatively in terms of uh, an equation comes out to be that the uh, rate at which you lose momentum is uh, proportional to the second derivative 
of the momentum density. This is uh, what comes out of this uh, uh, consideration that I just said. Uh, so it's proportional to the second derivative multiplied by the electron-electron mean free path. Uh, so, so look at the big difference. The uh, electron impurities mean free path comes in the denominator. The electron-electron mean free path comes in the numerator. Uh, and, and that almost uh, suggests that we will at some point be able to uh, replace these uh, expressions, one over kf times the mean free path and one over kf times w by the mean free path, the electron-electron mean free path divide, divided by kf w squared. And that observation was made by uh, my colleague Grisha Falkovich and, and uh, uh, Leonid Levitov a few uh, years ago. What we will uh, show here is that you can even go lower than this. Uh, but but uh, uh, we'll see that in, 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 uh, as time uh, goes on. So before see, seeing, uh, showing that, uh, let me just mention that uh, following this observation of uh, uh, Levitov and Falkovich, there were a few experiments uh, trying to look at the effects of electron-electron scattering in very clean graphene samples. And you, what you can see on the left, and I'm sorry I cannot point, but the pointer doesn't work for some reason. What you can see on the left is uh, that as you raise the temperature, and by that increase the rate of electron-electron scattering, the resistance actually goes down by about 10%. As you raise the temperature even farther, the electron phonon scattering comes in, and then, and then, uh, and, and then you lose this. Uh, uh, a gain that you had in, in, the, in suppressing the resistance. So it goes up again. But, but you see here, it's, it's limited. This is the resistance through a point contact, and it's limit, the, the gain you get here is limited by about 10%. We will see that uh, we can get much higher than that. Uh, now, uh, uh, another theoretical development on the background is, uh, again, by my uh, uh, colleague, uh, uh, Grisha Falkovich with his uh, student, Michal Shavit, they looked at the Corbino uh, disk, just an annulus, and they saw that in a, in a Corbino uh, disk, you can uh, basically eliminate the uh, resistance in the bulk, uh, in the bulk of the system, not in the contact. Uh, you can, you can elimin eliminate by using electron-electron scattering, and we'll come back to thinking about this uh, very soon. Uh, so, so what I'm, uh, I'd like to do now, basically for the rest of the talk, is to incorporate electron-electron scattering into a Landauer's picture. Because look what happens. We have Landauer's picture. Adi, that's Adi can I sorry. Adi, yeah, can I sure. interrupt you? Uh, Aninde has a question. I think he's raising his hand. Aninde, mm -hmm. can yeah, you, yeah. do you want to go ahead? Sure, sure. Th thanks, Aninde. Hi, Adi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good. Yeah. Then. So I I said good to see you, but I don't Yeah, yeah good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, so I have a one. So this uh, you said this resistance drops down. The experiment paper what you showed. So those are narrow constriction, right? These are uh, right. narrow constriction. Right. So my question is, if you have a rectangular geometry, and if you have a two reservoir, uh, so for that, is it possible to reduce that uh, your resistance? For, uh, for that meaning, for a for, for a, a, a sharp, yeah, I, I so yeah yeah. Can you go down below solvent resistance? Uh, so what we see is that it goes down below Chauvin resistance, uh, and and the the, the the outcome for a, a, a sharp constriction is that you can basically add two conductances. You can add the the electron electron uh, induced conductance to the Landauer Chauvin conductance. That reduces the the uh, resistance, but doesn't bring it down to zero. Uh, and uh, I would claim that uh, uh, there's a better uh, 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 geometry that can take you farther, and that's what I'd like to present. So in that case, so in the rectangular geometry, if you have a two reservoir, the reservoirs also model like a hydrodynamic limit, or those are like a normal reservoir? So uh, normal, reservoir. normal reservoir. Normal reservoir. It, it, it doesn't matter. The, the, the almost definition of a reservoir is uh, we have a sample in which we have a certain number of conducting channels. Right. The two reservoirs are places where there are many, many more conducting Absolutely. channels. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a 
think about the metals versus semiconductors. Right. Or versus graphene. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ati. Uh, so, so um, uh, the next step I want to to discuss is how, how we incorporate electron electron scattering into Landauer's picture. You know, Landauer's picture it's not the non-interacting electrons picture, but it's but the effect of electron electron scattering is missing there, um, and 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 we'd like to put it in. Now we know how to put the effects of electron electron interaction into do do this. Uh, Picture I just showed it to you, uh, uh, but but uh, we want to uh, you know make it compatible with the Landauer's picture that's very different from this. So so uh, that's what I'm going to to do now. And uh, in case you know with uh, you know internet is not uh, always infinitely reliable. So in case we'll have trouble later, let me tell you the answer. And to to understand the answer. Uh, what um, you, you know, uh, 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 it's better to think not uh, about the, the uh, plot you see at the top half of, of the slide, but at the plot you see at the lower half. Meaning a plot at which the width of the uh, sample changes as a function of position, which means that there are channels that uh, start uh, going from the left to the right, but are going to be reflected at some point because the uh, uh, because the sample got so narrow that the number of channels it transmits at the Fermi energy gets too small, and then some channels will be reflected not at the point uh, 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 at the contact between the resistance and the sample, but somewhere along the sample. Now think about electrons that are flowing in those channels. They go from the left. They, they get out with the Fermi energy plus the voltage you put in, uh, the Fermi energy of the left uh, reservoir. They start moving. And you know, you and I, uh, we, we calculated the uh, uh, quantum mechanical spectrum of this, of this sample. We know that they have no chance of ever making, making it to the other side. They are going to be reflected somewhere along the way. They don't know it, but they are doomed. They are never going to, to make it to the other side. Uh, 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 and that this reflection that will happen somewhere in the bulk is the source of resistance, and that's what I'm going to to, to show. This reflection will uh, uh, generate voltage drop in the sample itself. Now, if we put in electron-electron interaction, what wh what we're going to do is we are going to open a way for those electrons which are going to be reflected. We're going to open a way for them to be scattered into channels that are going to make it, that are going to go to the other side. So we introduce some kind of uh, electronic social mobility. We take electrons that are doomed to be reflected, and we give them a chance to move to the other side. Uh, and uh, that will uh, reduce the, the voltage drop in the sample and uh, suppress the resistance. And what I'm going to, to argue is that this allows us to uh, uh, basically eliminate all the resistance drop, resistance drop that happens in the sample itself. Not the resistance drop that happens in the contacts, but the, the drop that happens in the, in the sample itself. So, so the, 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 the uh, tool I'm going to use, the natural tool for this, is a uh, uh, Boltzmann Sorry. equation. Yes. Adi, I have a question here. So yes. when you say this, when you have a squeezed number of channels, then there's a question of also occupancy. So now if you want to scatter into those channels more and more electron, they should be for me blocked, right? So that should also be something which should come into the game. You cannot course, indefinitely scatter into them, right? So, of course, so but don't, where... don't, forget, don't forget the voltage, uh, it's linear response. The voltage uh, goes to zero and temperature is finite. Okay. Uh, okay. Because we need the electron-electron scattering rate. So voltage is uh, uh, much smaller than temperature, and that's that's what allows it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, now, how low could the uh, the voltage be and yet and still be in the linear response regime is a good question, which I'm I'm not going to talk about. Okay. So can so I ask question? Oh, sorry. Oh, I maybe just one more question here, and then you, you go ahead. In in the Landauer picture, in principle, the self-consistent electrostatics is already inbuilt, right? 
Electrostatics, so yes. What, that, uh, uh, yeah. that was the, uh, the comment I made that the Landauer's picture is not non-interacting. Electrostatics is taken care of, but not uh, scattering. I, I see. So that is the new addition, essentially, here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, so so, so the, the main tool I'm going to use is Boltzmann equation. Because Boltzmann equation, you know, it's the uh, uh, place for quantum mechanics and, and classical because, physics. Sorry, so just, yeah, just for other questions. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry. Both just go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, so, I'm done. Yeah, yeah so this, uh, so I guess you're going to talk about that, but the contact resistance mm -hmm. itself is some kind of an impedance mismatch problem which sort of, uh, sort of depends on having pure quasi-particles quasi with infinite lifetime. So for what I yeah, understood... Yeah, I'm going to get to you know, the context uh, towards the end. Basically, okay. electron-electron interaction is, it, it doesn't do much when okay. it comes to okay. the context. Okay. Okay. Uh, so so, so uh, the tool is going to be Boltzmann equation. You know, in Boltzmann equation, we, uh, uh, or in Boltzmann's way of thinking, we have a, a, the system uh, has a Fermi surface. Of course, Boltzmann didn't know that, but... Uh, uh, it's a modified version. Uh, so the system has a Fermi surface at equilibrium. It's uh, in its, uh, you know, thermal state. Out of equilibrium, it's uh, uh, deformed by whatever forces uh, we apply. And the uh, quantity that describes the state of the system at any given point in time is the density of electrons in phase space, namely in, as a function of position and momentum. Now, uh, here's a deformed Fermi surface, uh, uh, slightly larger. Uh, in fact, what we usually do is we don't talk about the uh, uh, density at any momentum, but at any angle, because we basically integrate over a moment uh, over the, the orange region, uh, orange colored region uh, that you see there, uh, and, and we talk about the density at at, uh, of electrons at the point R, and at the angular, uh, uh, at the angle of the momentum theta, uh, as the quantity that describes the state of the uh, uh, of the system. And you see, uh, as you see here, it varies as a function of position. Uh, and uh, uh, once we know it, we can calculate from it the density just by integrated over, you know, integrating over the orange pieces. Uh, around the uh, Fermi C, or the current density by doing a weight, weighted integral of that density multiplied by cosine theta or sine of theta, depending which angle, which uh, component of the current we want to uh, um, calculate. Now, the measured voltage uh, at any given point is proportional to the density. Uh, so, so if if we uh, basically if we know the density we should multiply it by the mu dn, by the inverse compressibility, and we get the local chemical potential. Now, how shall we know this age uh, uh, of r and theta? Uh, well, uh, Boltzmann gave us the, the, the equation that's named after him. And that equation basically says that uh, density in phase space uh, changes either by motion uh, according to equations of motion, namely, uh, 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 according to the velocity and the time derivative of the momentum, or by scattering or collision. Collision term, and there are all types of scatter scattering that comes into the collision terms, um, uh, impurity scattering, electron-electron scattering, and we'll have to worry about those soon. Uh, but now, if I want to Landauerize uh, the Boltzmann equation and make it look more like the Landauer picture, uh, that's what I want to do now, but I'd like to do it on a on an example, on a toy example, which makes it kind of uh, easy for me to explain what I want to explain. Uh, so, so uh, uh, here's my my uh, uh, toy example. It's called the wormhole, uh, and and you see it's a body of revolution. Uh, it has the the z-axis uh, around which the revolution takes place. And uh, it's, it's like a, a cylinder that squeezed at the center so that the, uh, as a function of z, the radius of the cross section changes. Okay, and we have a, a, the radius as a function of z, r of z, little r of z, defines the, the uh, uh, wormhole. Now, electrons, and that is important, electrons can flow only on the, on the surface. Okay, they cannot flow inside. Inside, it's a, it's a void. They can flow only on the surface. 
Uh, but, but uh, uh, you know, they start from a very wide surface. You see the radius is maximal at the, at the very beginning and very end, and it's minimal at the center. And for simplicity, it's uh, 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 symmetric and, you know, not, nothing uh, 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 to complicate things. Now, uh, let's, so, so what we'd like is to understand the resistance of such a device uh, without impurities. So uh, th this understanding is going to be uh, based on the Boltzmann equation, but the first thing we need to uh, realize is that here in this problem, because of its angular symmetry, the channel index is the angular momentum. It's the product of the momentum along the, uh, the azimuthal momentum multiplied by the local r. So the uh, so it's py. Y is the angle is the the, the azimuthal uh, axis. Uh, a py multiplied by r of z, and that angular momentum is conserved, which means that if you come the, if you come out with some uh, 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 angular momentum and you start moving in the z direction and r gets smaller, py will get bigger, and your azimuthal uh, momentum and velocity will get bigger, which means the energy that you will spend going around in circles will get bigger and bigger as small as r gets smaller and smaller and if at some point and this is a classical uh, observation if at some point the energy that you spend the kinetic energy that you spend moving around in circles instead of uh, uh, progressing in the direction that you want to get to the energy that you spend moving around in circles if it gets as high as your entire kinetic energy you're going to be reflected back because you don't have enough energy to keep both angular momentum and energy fixed and yet move into a place where uh, uh, R gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so that is the classical uh, mechanism for, for reflection here. Now, uh, in order to explain this in terms of uh, Landauer's picture, the key point is to change the representation of the Boltzmann equation. It's really a simple, a, a simple uh, uh, trick. Instead of talking about this density as a function of position in theta, we're going to talk about this density as a function of position and angular momentum. So we're going to uh, uh, describe the uh, 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 Fermi surface, the deformed Fermi surface, instead of uh, in terms of uh, triangular uh, slices as we did before, we're going to describe it in terms of slices as you see on the right side, uh, uh, horizontal slices, each one of them corresponding to a different angular momentum channel. Uh, 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 now, if you look at one of these slices, one thing you can see, and you can see it also on the plot, is that it has two points where it touches the Fermi surface. It has a right moving, uh, a, a point on the right, and a point to the left, unlike the, the triangle, triangle that we had before, that had only one region where it overlapped with the Fermi surface, where it measured the deformation of the Fermi surface. Now we're going to have right movers and left movers, which of course, if you think about it, Lander were, uses right movers and left movers all the time. So what we uh, uh, need to do now is in terms of this function, age uh, of position and angular momentum, right movers and left movers in terms of this function we need to write uh, down what is the physical density what is the physical current and then calculate this function so you know what the current is basically what uh, you know we're following landauer's footsteps so the current is not just going to be the difference between the right movers and the left movers summed over all channels over all angular momenta and uh, no density of states appearing because the density of states cancelled with with the velocity as we as we saw before density will have the sum of the two the right movers and the left movers multiplied by the density of states and now we need to write a, a Boltzmann equation uh, so we need to transform it from the original age of r and theta to the age that we have here which is a function of r and j so you know it's an algebraic exercise i did it five times i got the same answer in the majority of those times uh, my student uh, had a similar experience uh, so, so it's probably correct, but in fact, it, it, it's, it's almost obviously correct. Uh, if you have no collision term, let's put the, all the scatterings to zero for the moment. What we find is that the derivative 
of uh, age with respect to uh, uh, z to the direction of motion of propagation is zero meaning you don't uh, uh, scatter between uh, angular momentum channels because angular momentum is conserved so we get this uh, uh, a simple equation for ballistic propagation, which is the first derivative of H as a function of J and R is zero, and you, you'll agree with me, uh, this is uh, as simple as a differential equation. Uh, Adi, sorry, there is a question. Yes. Would you like to take, there's a question, would you like to take now? There's a raised hand. Uh, so, so uh, you, you give me uh... one more minutes at the end? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so go ahead. Okay, Avinash, you have a question? Yes. You raised your hand. Yeah. Professor Please go Stern, ahead. just a, a, so I guess a simple question. It's, uh, so here J denotes the angular momentum channel. So here you're not discretizing J. So you're using J as a continuum, continuum uh, variable. Yeah, yeah, actually, good question. I, I should have said it. Uh, you know, in quantum mechanics, we would uh, uh, quantize J and it would be uh, an integer. Yes. Uh, in classical physics, it's a continuum number. It's a, basically, we usually call it L, LZ. And, and I use here a different letter. Uh, for everything that I'm going to say, classical physics suffices. Uh, quantum uh, uh, mechanics will come when you have these uh, uh, conductance steps and uh, when things be, uh, change discontinuously as a function of W. Everything I'm going to say that is not going to have that. And in fact, electron-electron scattering would uh, smooth uh, all these steps. So, so, so yes, let's think about J as a continuous variable. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, so uh, having solved this equation, let's say, uh, you know, plot the solution uh, and, and, uh, 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 look, the solution tell, tells you exactly what I was uh, saying in a, a, a more uh, wordy way uh, before. Uh, so, so on the left, what you see is the uh, current, uh, 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 and and uh, you know the x-axis is position, the y-axis is uh, angular momentum, and the color codes is how much current this particular angular momentum at that particular point carries. Now, what do you see? You see the, the low angular momenta, low angular momenta electrons, those who came mostly moving straight toward their goal, they're making it to the other side. In contrast, a high angular momentum, whether positive or negative, those are electrons who spend too much time, too much energy uh, going around in circles, and their contribution to the current is green. Green is, is, is here is zero. So they don't contribute to the current at all. Now let's look at the right side. At the right hand plot, we look at the contribution to the density, and which eventually turns into voltage. Now you see the, the, those channels that carry the current, that carry the, uh, uh, that do not uh, get backscattered, they don't contribute any, any voltage. The contribution to the voltage, positive on the left, negative on the right, the contribution to the voltage is all coming from those channels that are not making it to the other side, that are being reflected. So, so uh, uh, now we can, we can calculate, just by integrating over all those channels, uh, we can calculate what's going to be the local potential dope. And now look what, what we are saying. There, there is a, a system here that's totally ballistic. There is a Landauer Sharvin resistance, but it's not at the contacts. It's at the bulk, and it's at the bulk because the reflection takes place at the bulk, and the voltage drops where the reflection takes place. So you see uh, the, the outcome of this integral, and you see that you know you get v of z uh, uh, being proportional to one minus whatever two over pi arc sine of uh, r minimum divided by r of z. The important thing it depends on z. Uh, and that is something that's uh, something that can be checked experimentally. So my experimental colleagues uh, don't know how to make wormholes, uh, at least as of now, they don't know how to make wormholes. Uh, so instead what they do, they take a, a, a Corbino a disc, 
And uh, uh, you probably have heard about that from Chandan. That is a, is a beautiful experiment. And you know, uh, 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 it's an amazing piece of uh, experimental physics that he and the others uh, have done. So what they're doing is they measure the voltage. I told you they can measure the voltage anywhere they want. They measure it over uh, about 60% of the Corbino disk. They get a voltage map. Uh, they get a voltage map, as you see here, and they, uh, 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 it's uh, asymmetric, it's symmetric, more or less, so they can plot it only as a function of R. And what you see is that uh, as a function of density, the mean free path changes, and the highest density approaches uh, the landauer Chauvin expected resistance, where the difference comes out of impurities. But you see the difference is very, very small. Now, what we'd like is to take this uh, uh, resistance drop, this voltage drop at the bulk of the sample and suppress it, uh, first theoretically and then experimentally. Uh, so so uh, what I want to tell you now is that as a general rule, when the landauer Chauvin resistance is spread in the bulk, when it's not at the contact, electron-lecton scattering may eliminate it. How do we see that? Well, we need to incorporate uh, electron lecton scattering into a Boltzmann equation. Uh, so, what's, you know, it's a scattering, it will come out on the right side of the equation as a scattering uh, term, as a collision term. But uh, when we uh, uh, write it, we'll need to do two things. First, we'll need to write it in terms of channel, uh, you know, age of J, R and J, so in terms of angular momenta. And second, uh, it's, uh, you know, electron-electron scattering has two conservation laws that need to be obeyed by the scattering term. First, electrons get, uh, a charge gets conserved. You know, electrons don't get generated out of nowhere and don't, don't disappear out of, into nowhere. And, and the second, momentum is conserved. And this is a big difference from electron impurities. Uh, uh, scattering, uh, uh, momentum is conserved. Uh, basically, two electrons are scattering. The, momentum of the center of mass of the electronic system doesn't change. Uh, so we need to take those two into account. Uh, you see that here in the plot, uh, electron impurity scattering tries to uh, make the uh, Fermi surface centered around zero, but keeps the, the, the uh, area of the Fermi surface because it keeps the, uh, it conserves the charge. Electron, electron scattering doesn't try to uh, uh, center the Fermi surface around zero. It keeps it centered where it is, but tries to make it into a circle. Uh, and, and this is how the collision term for electron-electron scattering in the usual way, not in the landauerized way. Uh, this is how it, it, it's written. You, uh, and you see, uh, let me say a few words about it. You see, it's proportional to one over the electron-electron mean free path. It's negative, of course, it's a collision term. You lose momentum. And so the first term is just momentum loss at the electron-electron mean free path. The other two terms, the second and the third, make sure that you conserve the density N of R and the current J of R. Okay? Now we need to write this, we need to do the algebra that will transform this term from. Uh, uh, age of R and theta to age of R and J. And when we do that, this is what we find. Now, let me say a few words about that. Uh, so, first of all, we find the collision term. I think I'm missing a minus sign here. And uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but in any case, uh, let's look at this term. Uh, first of all, outside, we have one over LEE, the electron electron mean free path, but it's now multiplied by this term nu j, which is uh, the density of states of the j, uh, angular corresponding to angular momentum j. To make it uh, a more transparent, LEE of the earlier slide is now replaced by LEE multiplied, you see, by the square root, look at the second line, the square root of 1 minus j over k f of z squared, meaning the larger J is, the shorter LEE gets. So you get more and more scat electron-electron scattering, the larger angular momentum is. Now, this is, in fact, very simple 
to understand. You know, the electron uh, is the, the, the higher the angular momentum is, the uh, more electrons spend time just moving around in circles. And they make very small uh, progress in the z direction. Now, LEE is the electron electron scattering rate measured along the z direction. So the a uh, higher angular momentum is what's going to happen is you're going to move around in circles, make no progress, and be more and more susceptible to scattering of other electrons. And that's the, 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 the picture I gave you before. You'll be scattered and you, are, you have a chance of being scattered to a channel in which the angular momentum is smaller and the chances of uh, making it to the other side are, are higher. Uh, so, so uh, uh, that's the, the full Boltzmann equation, and now we need to solve it. Easier to, said than done, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, solving it exactly, I didn't, we didn't find a way to do. But what we uh, did find a way to do is to uh, solve in powers of electron-electron uh, uh, mean free path. So in powers of LEE. Uh, and now, in, in some sense, you can say this is a, you know, LEE is not a dimensionless number. So, so it's LEE divided by the scale over which the radius changes. So uh, in, in, in some sense, the, the extreme is when the radius doesn't change at all. So, so that means you have a cylinder. And when you have a cylinder, and the only scattering mechanism you have is a, uh, electron electron scattering, your, your system is translation invariant, uh, the momentum of the center of mass is conserved, and there will be no bulk resistance. So uh, uh, the first guess, uh, the, the guess that takes the adiabatic limit where the radius changes very, very slowly, will be just a rigidly shifted Fermi C because it's just a Galilean boost. Uh, and that is what you see now uh, uh, written as a, 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 j, a j of z uh, here at the lower part of the slide. A, and this you see is to a, a order of LE to the power zero, independent of LE. Now we can take this expression, this guess, substitute it into the equation up there and start getting corrections. And we're going to worry only about corrections which are linear in the electron-electron mean free path. You see the second and the third term are linear in electron-electron mean free path in LEE. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm circling uh, the lower one uh, with, with this uh, circle because that's the one we, we should worry about. That's the one that carries density. That's the one that gives voltage. Now let's look at it. It's expressed, as you can tell, as you can see, it's expressed in the derivative of psi uh, with respect to z. What is z? I already told you. Now I'll tell you what psi is. Psi is the angle of the opening. Now, if, the, if there is an angle of opening, if there is just an angle of opening, that means the number of channels uh, that can be transmitted changes, and you get a resistance because, as we said before, just for the ballistic, in the ballistic case, you get resistance because channels get reflected. In the electron-electron scattering rate, when you dominate the electron-electron scattering, what you see in this expression is that the voltage is going to be proportional to the derivative of psi with respect to z. So it's not enough. It's basically going to be proportional not to the uh, derivative of the number of channels with respect to z, but to the second derivative. The uh, ballistic resistance, the lambda one shaving is uh, proportional to the derivative. The uh, resi residual resistance after electron-electron scattering does its course uh, is proportional to the second derivative. And this is why it gets much smaller. And, and, and let's uh, come back to our uh, wormhole and, uh, uh, and compare ballistic to uh, hydrodynamic. So, so what you see uh, at the lower half is what you saw before, is the hydrodynamical expression. This is now calculated for a particular uh, 
a wormhole, you, you see the formula uh, R of Z is R0 times cos, hyperbolic co cosine of Z over A, which means the, the minimal radius is R0, uh, and, the, and A uh, tells you how fast the radius uh, changes as a function of Z. How adiabatic is this change? Now, what we see on the lower side, as we said before, in the ballistic case, either a, a, a channel is fully transmitted, in which case it contributes nothing to the voltage, or it's reflected, in which case it contributes heavily to the voltage. What you see up there, uh, uh, the upper half of the plot, is the uh, uh, same analysis for the hydrodynamical case. So angular momentum on the y-axis, position on the x-axis, and the color plot tells you how, how many of those electrons on the left, the left plot that plots the current, how many of those electrons could actually contribute to the current. And you see that electrons from angular momenta that before had no contribution to the current now have contribution to the current. And on the right, you see that uh, uh, the distribution or the contribution to the voltage uh, is now more evenly or more uh, 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 evenly spread. But the main thing you should uh, uh, watch when you look at the at the right plot is the color the, the color scale on the on the to the right of the plot and compared be, between the ballistic and the and the um, hydrodynamical. You see that the uh, um, color scale changed by a factor ten. The, the the level of density that comes out of reflection uh, out of reflections. In the hydrodynamical case, is a factor 10 smaller than what it was uh, for the ballistic case. To look at it differently, here what I uh, plot to you is the voltage as a function of uh, uh, position, now, which is the integrating now over all, all j's. And what you see in blue is the ballistic case, and, in, uh, and the other two uh, are the hydrodynamical case. And you see the voltage drop gets down uh, uh, significantly, in one case more sig significantly than the other. Now, what's the difference between these two? Uh, it is how, uh, how fast you open up the radius from R minimum to R maximum. Uh, and that's the scale A that I uh, uh, defined before. In this slide, it's called L, but never mind. Uh, this is how fast how fast does it take be, be, before the minimal radius opens up to become you know five times the uh, its minimal value. Uh, if uh, um, the, the the minimal radius is much smaller, it is much larger than this L. Uh, uh, namely, this L is very small, and the opening takes place very fast. Electron-electron scattering reduces the resistance from uh, Landauer's expression uh, or multiplies the Landauer expression by the ratio of LEE divided by R minimum, which is what we call before LEE divided by W. But if the opening is adiabatic, it's even more dramatic, and the electron-electron scattering leads to uh, uh, multiplying the landauer sharvin resistance by LEE over uh, the essentially the system size. So the resistance decreases with uh, uh, the system size. Now, as I hinted, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done in two, three minutes. Uh, as I uh, uh, hinted before, at the contacts, what happens is uh, everything changes very fast, very fast on a scale of LEE. And, and then, uh, electron electron uh, scattering cannot do anything when you have a reflection that happens on a scale that is shorter than the scale at which you get uh, scattering. Uh, so, so, so contact resistance is not going to be affected. And in a Corbino uh, disk, uh, the significant contact resistance is, is uh, the inner contact. Uh, I think uh, it was showing who asked about uh, the symmetry between the two contacts. Uh, uh, so a Corbino is a case where there is very uh, uh, large asymmetry. Uh, the, 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 con the inner contact is very small, 
the outer contact is very large, and uh, uh, the other con the resistance of the other contact is not significant. What happens is half of the resistance falls on the inner contact, half falls in the bulk, and, and the half that falls in the bulk we can get rid of, and that is what the expression the the experiment says, uh, shows. What you see here is the resistance in the bulk and in the contact as a function of a temperature, different colors are different temperatures, and there's a function of position. Uh, oops, and you see it here, or you see the experiment on the left, the two and the right, and remarkably they come in uh, identical colors. Uh, and, and they also look pretty uh, uh, similar to, to one another. And the, the bottom line is uh, the lambda Chauvin resistance, when it's spread in the bulk, uh, 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 can be eliminated by electron electron scattering. So, to summarize, uh, uh, you hear me? I hear some, some uh, strange noise. No, no, I, we hear you. Ah, okay. How do we hear good. you clearly? Good, good, good. Uh, so, so, to summarize, uh, what I told you is that ballistic motion is a waste, wasteful way to drive a car in because electrons go out of the uh, Reservoir, even though they don't, they have no chance of making it to the other uh, reservoir. Uh, more, uh, uh, you know, uh, precisely, this is expressed by saying that uh, uh, if you have a geometry where the number of channels varies along the direction of of current flow, there will be a local resistance that's a local voltage drop that's proportional to the derivative of that number, the number of channels with respect to Z. If you put in electron-electron interaction, this dn dz changes to lee multiplied by d squared and dz squared. So, so you see, you 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 took a, a, a one more derivative and multiplied it by a small number, uh, and therefore an adiabatic change of n with respect to position, as long as impurities are are not coming back to haunt you, uh, an adiabatic change will make the the resistance smaller and smaller. And with that, uh, uh, I thank you very much for, for listening. Okay, Adi, thanks for the wonderful talk, particularly, I mean, with so much energy. I, I see that you never sat down during the whole talk. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, I cannot sit when, I, when I'm You cannot sit down. <laughs> yeah. I know that you, you like to give it this way, so I think, okay, yeah. so fine. So time for questions. I see a raised hand already. So, so actually, uh, 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 like uh, uh, let me do one thing, which is let me yes. uh, bring down Grab the presentation, and then maybe I'll see. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Stop sharing if that's okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm okay, back. Great. Yeah, please go ahead. So any questions? Uh, I think somebody called Arnav raised his hand, but he's not asking. Maybe Anindya, yeah, oh, oh, you want sorry. to go ahead? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Arnav, you. Arnav, you can go ahead. Arnav. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi, Adi. Nice to see you after a few months. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nice to see you. Okay. And um, so um, it's not clear to me. What is the advantage of Corvino set geometry to study hydrodynamics uh, over uh, graphene constriction in usual Holbert Holbert device? So, so the, the the point is the the reflection of channels in a Corvino geometry is is gradual. Basically, the NDZ is proportional to Z. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, 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 so, so the. Uh, or, uh, excuse me, n is proportional to z, so the n dz is a constant. So, so uh, the the change in the number of channels is gradual. Now, in a in a, a sharp constriction, um, the, the it's the other limit. The change is very fast, right? You change on a scale of the size of the constriction, and that's where ele electron electron scattering is less uh, effective in suppressing the resistance. Mm, okay. 
uh, okay uh, yeah um, i need i need to uh, uh, yeah we can discuss uh, so, uh, uh, and in fact you know uh, as, as, as you could see, the way we solved the Boltzmann equation was assuming that LEE was the smallest uh, scale. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, um, Falkovich and Levitov and, and, and I think one or two more co-authors solved it for the case of a constriction, mm -hmm. uh, which is a delta function constriction. And, and you see, you get a different answer. Um, and you basically get uh, an answer that uh, doesn't allow you to suppress the, the resistance all the way down. Okay, I have a, uh, some more questions uh, from this uh, Kumar uh, Idaiyan, this nature physics paper, uh, where uh, they have uh, seen that uh, this decreasing the uh, constriction size, they are getting higher and higher uh, contribution of uh, hydrodynamic. Um, electron uh, uh, conductivity so but it, it looks uh, I mean contradictory uh, so when you are uh, uh, decreasing the constriction size you mean you are decreasing the width uh, but uh, to get a strong hydrodynamic effect you should get the LEE much much less than W right but yes. but on the other hand, you are uh, decreasing the constriction size. That, in, that means decreasing the W. Uh, that is uh, uh, um, decreasing the difference between LEE and W. Uh, you are getting higher um, hydrodynamic conductivity. So, uh, so, so, uh, so you you are asking about which experiment? Uh, this uh, yeah, Kumar Kumar uh, et al. This Nature Physics 2017 paper. So, so the uh, the Andre the the. It, it, it's not the it's not the the Weizmann experiment. Uh, no, no, no. So you so you 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 showed a uh, um, in, in a slide this uh, Kumar et al. Uh, this 2017 paper uh, where oh, superelastic oh, oh. flow of viscous electron fluid through graphene. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, uh, you know, if you are, I think I agree with you. If if the constriction is much uh, smaller than LEE you're not going to see a significant effect of electron-electron scattering. You, you'll see something that will go like a W of L e to some power. It will not be exponentially small, but it will not be. In order to see something, you need you need L e to be smaller than W. I completely agree. L e to be smaller than W? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. yes. Uh, but but. Um, if you increase the W uh, over LE, it will give you the strong hydrodynamic limit, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So then it should give a uh, much more uh, higher contribution of uh, hydrodynamic conductivity. Yes. And the deviation between the surface resistance and the... No, but, uh, resistance. but again, uh, again, once you do it in a constriction, you have you have two, two length scales. You have the width of the constriction and you have the the size of the constriction you know how, uh, uh, how long do you have to go be, before you go from one side to the other side what i'm saying is what you want is to have both of them smaller than lee none of these experiments did that the the, the first experiment that did that is the ilani one mm -hmm. the one i, I was showing uh, and okay. that's where you will see you you want le to be the smallest of all length scales if you make le smaller than w but larger than the the distance along which the, you pass the constriction, then you're not making best use of electron lecton scattering. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, I think Aninda, you had the next question. You had your, and then Bhaktosh has a question. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Adi. Very nice talk. In fact, I have a very similar uh, question which I raise. Uh, so, you discuss about this, you know. Uh, if something which has a change size is changing, as as you give an example for Corbino disk, and right. you defined in terms of this R minimum, right? You have a two length scale. There was a electron electron um, scattering length scale, and you have a R minimum, and that determines your the value of your resistance, right? Uh, no, 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 no. There's another scale, which is how fast R minimum opens up. That's true. That's true. Right. Yeah. Now, coming back to the question I raised, so it will be rectangular geometry. So I don't have a constriction now anymore. So only the width is the length scale. 
and my electron electron interaction is the length scale and we know from the sarbin resistance that resistance come because of the mismatch between the number of channels in my reservoirs to the number of channels in my rectangular geometry right. so in that in that geometry how you know this theory gives me the i mean what's the resistance i expect in the hydrodynamics limit that's my first question no so so, yeah. so in this case if yeah. you have uh, this is the picture i showed in the very beginning mm. right uh, rectangle and two reservoirs mm. Mm. and electron electron scattering is not going to help you right uh, so uh, so it will be like it will be determined by the sarbin resistance it will be the sarbin resistance ah, yes. right so yes. then it's fine so what you yeah. want you want to start with the uh, coupling uh, you know with the contacts to the reservoirs being very bold so that their contribution to the resistance is is not significant and then narrow down the sample uh, diabatically right. and then open right. it up again right so, yeah, the... so, yeah, no, no, fantastic. So I had a confusion. So that's good, good. So then my next next question was: if I have a, let's say, if you have an error, if you have the way you you, you have uh, uh, you have illustrated that there's a, there is a constriction. Now let's say I have a transmission. I have some sort of some sort of transmission there, some sort of uh, some quantum point contact or something like that. Then well, how this? Uh, uh, so so you have a r minimum right you have something yes. this this thing so uh, imagine that there there i have a qpc or something like that which has a finite transmission and finite reflection in terms of landauer theory mm -hmm. so now now how this hydrodynamics picture is going to change is there is going to be something beyond that so the question is uh, how fast does the reflection of channels happen yeah so if your constriction changes the number of channels from you know a, a 20 to 10 over a scale that's much smaller than LEE then you're going to get those 10 big reflected and 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 you're going to get the sharpening resistance associated with the reflection of those 10 channels a, a, your your way of uh, avoiding this resistance if you make the the reflection gradual which means you don't put a constriction you you put a an adiabatic uh, mm -hmm. a constriction, and by adiabatic I mean adiabatic with respect to the LEE, not with respect to lambda Fermi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you no, need to say uh, if I have just last one, sorry, sorry, yeah. If no, 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 sorry, please go yeah. ahead. So if you have a finite potential barrier, like a quantum mechanical barrier, so this hydrodynamic will not help me. Right, right. If the no, if the barrier is very smooth, ha, smooth then, then yes, yes, yeah. Uh, so the, the point is not potential barrier, not potential barrier. The yeah. point is adiabatic or sharp. Yeah, yeah, you want it to be adiabatic. If it's adiabatic, it's basically everything I said will work. Thank you, Adi. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Adi, sure. Just just to clarify, I, I think uh, what Anida was saying is that if you have a have a barrier right at the constriction. Uh, that barrier only will see those electrons which make it to the constriction. Those it will not see those which do not make it. Yeah. So he is asking basically if I put a, an official let's say I put a delta function barrier right at your nice wormhole geometry right in the middle, then what should I see? And then probably. So so, have, so uh, yeah. he, he, that, that's what I said. So suppose that uh, you know you started from a thousand channels. By the time you got to our minimum, only a hundred were left. Uh, and, and that's fine. You don't get a voltage out of that because you have electron electron scattering all the way from all the way when you reduced from 1000 to 100. The uh, electron electron scattering very effectively eliminated the voltage drop. Now you got to 100 and, and, and you put a delta function uh, barrier and 50 are going to be reflected back. <clears throat> Their contribution to the voltage is not going to be eliminated by electron electron scattering because it's not adiabatic anymore. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dr. you had a question. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. This is uh, probably something which I should have learned in school because we never actually learn about electron electron scattering. Uh, so the question is um, what I understood. So basically what is happening is that because of uh, scattering, you are letting the modes to hop. Basically the electron can mode hop and go into the uh, channels which conduct. So the question is that why is it that impurity, so of course, impurity scattering uh, you lose momentum and it causes resistance. But why is it that electron electron scattering doesn't do the same thing? So, somehow, it, there's something which is very special and dif different between impurity scattering and electron electron scattering. Yeah, yeah. Well, electron electron scattering does not, 
you know, conserves momentum because the potential is a function of the distance between two electrons. Okay. And so the, the, their total momentum is conserved. So there's no dissipation. And, and, and they are flowing. Now, uh, also the total momentum of the electron and the impurity is conserved in a collision between an electron and an impurity. But the impurity is, you know, glued in, 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 in concrete to the lattice, which is glued to the rest of the lab and to the earth and so on. So uh, the, the momentum is uh, mostly given to, to, to that, and that doesn't contribute to the current. Okay. So, okay. Say, but in general, there is dissipation because of electron-electron scattering, right? So why is there dissipation in general and not in this case? I don't know. This is not a very well-framed question, but yeah. So, so whether there is dissipation or not is a subtle question. Yeah. Um, um, and, and at low voltage, at low current, there won't be any dissipation because uh, uh, all the you know, the energy, when you have a scattering event between two electrons, the momentum stays within the system, the, the uh, energy stays within the system. So, so uh, whether you call it a, a dissipation, it's, it's within the system that flows. Uh, dissipation is when you hit the sample. That, that's not heating yet. Heating is when, when those electrons scatter or phonons. And, and we're talking about a device where that scattering doesn't happen along the flow of the current. Okay, so, so, so that's the point. Thanks. Any other questions? Please unmute yourself and ask. Um, no other question? I, I have some questions, so then I can take the liberty of asking them. Any other question? So you speak from two uh, windows, right? Yes, I do. Just, just as a safety measure, you know, Adi. If I'm kind of, <laughs> because I'm also a doorkeeper. So I'm logged in from the, you know, the, the account which uh, corresponds to this DPS talk so that I can let people in. And then my personal account to which I listen to you. Okay. Uh, okay. So maybe nobody, if nobody else is asking question, I, I would like to ask a few questions. Adi, so, so okay. This, I, 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 just, I just have to. To uh, drink some water. I'll have to stop in five minutes. Sounds good. Sounds good. I think I'll communicate the question in five minutes. Uh, uh, so the question, I think what you're saying is that because if there is a sharp change of density of states, then wherever this sharp change of density of states happen because of channel difference, you have the resistance localized there. After that, if you are ballistic or whatever, it doesn't matter because the sharp change was there. That is a sharp in resistance. Now, what you are doing is you're adiabatically distributing that sharp resistance all over the place. That's the first step, right? And then you're bringing in electron-electron uh, scattering such that even that resistance can be eliminated. These are the two steps you're following, right? Adi? Exactly. So I, I think the question would be, and then you chose the wormhole geometry. So given that, let's say I'm in two dimensions. I assume that I'm in two dimensions strictly. Then what is the best? Is there a limit to the best you can do to kind of... Uh, slowing down this rate of change of uh, change of you know the channel numbers uh, you you already yeah. so wormhole geometry is already optimized in that sense that's the first question and yeah, second so, question so, is uh, in fact we are thinking about this um mm -hmm. and and it's a it's a question of what are the rules of the game yeah uh, you know what do what what do we need to keep fixed so if you tell me there are no impurities in my world I can go to a distance of a thousand kilometers and not see any uh, impurity, and and you don't you don't care about going to la very large distances, uh, and and our minimum you want one value and our maximum you want another value. I'll tell you do it as a, as adiabatic as you can, but in real life that's not the case. In real life there, there is a limit to how large the system is. Uh, so 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 you need to tell me what you fix and then. I'll, it will become an optimization problem. Okay, so I'll say yeah. that whatever is available in Shahilan is lab, given that constraint, what is the best geometry you have in mind? Have you, do you uh, think you have already gone to the best geometry or something else is there? Sorry, if it is a secret, I don't want to ask that question, but if not... No, no, uh, the, the point is not a secret. The point is uh, what exactly they can do, what they can do of a, a you know, lunch conversation or whether... Or, <laughs> okay, fine. There's a point fine, what fine, they fine. can do in real life. 
Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I think that it, it would be nice to have a... You know, what's the problem with the Corbino? The problem is you, you, we, we do not know how to get rid of the inner corner. Inner one. Inner one. Uh, so maybe if we could uh, somehow do something that uh, goes like that in the third dimension. You know, if you can play with the, with the graphene and form something that uh, looks like a horn, then, then we could get rid of that. Uh, that's the I direction see. I was thinking of. But uh, none of this, you know, Corbino is relatively simple to produce. Any, any other step uh, will be much harder, like the wormhole. The wormhole is perfect. Just, just yeah, go and do I it. It's so difficult. <laughs> but starting, I think from starting from a, a lattice model, I think you will have inevitably encountered defects on the way. Uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, and then there will be trouble with that, I, I believe. You will have resistance from there. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, now the other question. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and the next question. As you say, if I screen the, if you are in two dimension, let's say now you really have a two dimensional electrodynamics, then how does it influence your problem? I mean, let's say it's really log and not the standard Coulomb interaction. Then does it make it yeah, better? It's not going to make a difference. So, you know, uh, uh, Landau, uh, 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 Landau, is not Landau, uh, Landau's argument for the uh, ineffectiveness of electron electron scattering is very, very strong. It could have been no, that, no, no, that, that, that I understand. Adi, Adi, that's not the question. The question is in terms of geometrical constraint, does it help you or make it worse if you are if you have a constraint yeah. from the experiment? Think that you have this much size, some finite size. Then if uh, you screen uh, it I don't I don't think it will make a difference. It won't it won't okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think. Yeah. And what about three dimensional material? You don't have the right parameters for them so that you can try this in three dimension, is it? That's, that's a good question. Uh, uh, the, the only reason we didn't think too much about three dimensions, either the experiment, you know, this was, you could, you could see 50% of the cohorts are experimentalists. We were working very closely to a particular experiment. Thinking about it in three dimensions is a, is a good thing to do. We just didn't do it yet, but uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a good thing to do. Uh, uh, also, you know, there are materials which are very, very ballistic in three dimensions. Like, you know, people have uh, uh, various uh, De La Fossite materials where, where uh, the mean free path can be uh, tens of microns. Um, that's a different work I, I've done, but I won't start a new talk now. Uh, okay. Last question, Adit, and you may not answer this. So does it, does three body and four body interaction helps? And because if two body does you this, I mean, does it like make it better theoretically? Just a question. Theoretically. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't okay. think of that. Okay. Uh, one more. Can I just ask? Uh, yeah. Just no, no, Bhattosh has raised hand. Okay. Bhattosh, yeah. Sorry. I'm really sorry. But I was just wondering through your talk that so when we look at this uh, conventional picture of transport and magnetic field, so when we just mm -hmm. do even in conventional three dimensional Boltzmann transport and magnetic field, then all the transport happens because of scattering, right? Uh, because essentially you have these Landau levels and things actually hop from one to the other because of scattering. Yes. So that, that's again an example where you get finite conductivity because of scattering. Right. So. Uh, so okay. Uh, actually, <laughs> I, I, I didn't talk at all about magnetic fields. It's, we did something about that for very weak fields and classical because it was related to the experiment. But, yeah. but yes, you're right. Uh, uh, if there's no scattering at all, at all, and you have a perfectly clean uh, uh, material, then just by Galilean invariance, you're going to have uh, sigma xx equals zero and sigma xy equals the classical value. Um, uh, that, uh, I, I fully agree. So same argument goes through for even this electron-electron scattering argument goes through for that, or it's much more complicated? So uh, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, uh, what happens if you have a, a magnetic field? And complicated uh, geometries. Uh, it's a simple bulk, just simple bulk 3D. Uh, say it again in 3D. In, in, in 3D in bulk 3D. If I just yeah. form lambda levels in bulk 3D, and uh, I can look at conductivity there, and uh, I could get some corrections which are very similar from zero yeah. re zero conductivity to finite conductivity because of this electron electron scattering. Yeah, I, I, I assume you, you'll, you'll, uh, there will be similarities, but you know, it's, a, it's, a, sure. a, 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 it's not something I can answer uh, it's uh, happens, yeah. without thinking about it uh, properly. Okay. Uh, Adi, so, yeah, 
you have to go yeah. now right yeah <laughs> no by by the way i think bhaktos asked a very nice question because i think within if i stick in a magnetic flux through your warm hole that should give me some new control of the angular momentum and that should make a difference probably that's an interesting direction quantum right? mechanics i mean the, quantum, yes, only quantum, quantum mechanics mechanical. yes yes only quantum mechanics which is yeah basically everything yes. i did was classical yeah yeah uh, okay I I I I'm afraid I'll have to uh yes to apologize we have to leave so, you. yes we have to uh, leave you now so uh, th- Ali thanks I, a lot I, I'd again like to say thank you very much uh, you've been yeah, a very sure. uh, a very very active audience and uh, I enjoyed the question very much pleasure here and we really hope that you see us physically uh, next time while you give a definitely. talk definitely definitely I I I I will uh, I will be, I will get there <laughs> and I hope we'll meet okay. in various places Great. Great. Thanks a lot, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.